Welcome to Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm Julia LaRoche, and today we're joined by Mondelez International CEO Dirk Vandeput. Mondelez is the maker of some of your favorites, including Oreos and Ritz crackers. Dirk, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hi, Julia. Pleasure to be here. Okay, well, Dirk, the news that you all are bringing up today is sustainability, which is really interesting to me because you would think that some of these initiatives might fall by the wayside in the middle of this global pandemic. Why is it so important now to move ahead on sustainability? Well, I, I think in the first place, because as, as a company, uh, life goes on and, and we consider that as a company, we need to have a dual goal. We have to deliver our financial performance as a company but at the same time, we need to try to make a bigger impact on, on, the, on the world and, and try to make our contribution to the world. I, say, I would say, secondly, um, it's, it's embedded in our purpose. We've declared that that is what we want to do, uh, um, empower people to snack right. And so it's part of our missions, of our values, and so on. And there is a, is a very high stakeholder interest in the subject. Our employees want us to continue to do this. Our clients are interested, our investors, some of the other stakeholders. But I think the most important reason for us is that consumers, uh, through all of this, will be very conscious about the planet, the fragility of everything. And, and they will, uh, to my opinion, once the crisis aspect of, of this is over, uh, return to be very focused on what companies are doing. And that's why we think we should just continue for all these reasons. Yeah, it's really interesting that you bring up the consumer and it, it does go beyond just the environment. It's so many different aspects of, I guess you can say stakeholder capitalism, if you will. I would love to just hear your philosophy as a CEO navigating through this crisis. What are your views when it comes to those sorts of leadership initiatives? Um, well, I think you have a number of, of priorities in a, in a crisis like this. And, and for us, obviously, the first one is our, is our people. And as a leader, you need to show that you have the back of your employees. Um, and we're trying to do that through all the uh, measures that we're putting in place, uh, the distancing, the, the, the health checks, the, we provide masks for everybody and so on. Um, the, the second big thing I think is, is to take care of our consumers and to make sure that we uh, supply them with the snacks that they like. And in, in a crisis like this, it's important. So you're com as a leader, you're confronted with this dilemma. You need to push your organization to keep on going in very tough uh, situations. And, and uh, I'm very proud of the, of the people in Mondelez. They've taken that on with a vengeance and, and they consider that it is necessary to provide people with uh, the snacks they like and which bring, bring a, li a little bit of relief for them. Um, I think it's also as a leader important to make sure that you do your role in the community, that you help. So we've been making contributions around the world to different relief organizations in cash or, or, in, uh, or in product. And so I, I think it's important to really uh, show up as a leader of your com company in the right way, particularly in a situ situation like this one. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's so fascinating to me when it comes to Mondelez, you're a global snacking giant, yet you all take this local first approach. You also have many local brands. How has that been beneficial to you all in kind of navigating through the pandemic and then also when it comes to implementing some of these initiatives? Yes, we, we have pushed the accountability um, for day-to-day uh, -day management and setting the, the local strategy to our local teams. And we try to empower them as much as we can. And that has been extremely beneficial as things start to happen around the world. And you, you've seen what the situation is like in the U.S., but imagine India or Brazil or Russia uh, or, or China, where it all started. Uh, our local teams need to feel that they're in charge and, and that they can take the steps that they need. So I think it helped us that we had pushed this out. Uh, talking about our brands, um, what we've seen is that consumers are starting to consume many different brands. Like in the U.S., we, yes, of course, Oreo is our big brand, Chips Ahoy is our big brand, but we see things like Nutter Butter or Nilla. Uh, or uh, taking on 30, 40, 50% new consumers. 
And, and I think um, that's where our local brands really have helped us also in this crisis. Consumers are looking for more snacking options and they're entering in these unique uh, culturally linked local brands that we have. So that has been a big benefit for us also. Do you also feel like um, that those folks who are getting introduced or reintroduced to some of these favorites you're just mentioning, do you feel like that's going to be, I guess, sustainable, maybe sticky going forward, that it's going to be more than just, you know, I personally stocked up with a lot of Ritz crackers, haven't had those in several <laughs> years. So do you think folks are going to, you know, continue on that path? I, I think they will. Uh, I think what's going to happen is that we're all going to be very reluctant or resistant to just go out, uh, out every day. And I think there will be a lot more eating at home going on, which is a good thing for the families and cooking together. And I think uh, by itself that it's, it's quite good. But, but we will spend more time in our homes until we feel safe. And as a consequence, uh, as we've seen, people will snack more and they will explore other brands. So I, I can't talk for three years down the road, but for the foreseeable future, I do think that that trend will continue. And then just in general, what are you seeing when it comes to the consumer? I mean, you or you're global, you're all around the world, different countries. What are kind of some of the insights that you're seeing right now that you can share with our viewers? Um, well, I, I think that in general, um, it's been striking to me that people have really observed the, the lockdown and the social distancing around the world. It's, it's been quite uh, impactful to see. I think um, also there has been incredible uh, uh, signs of people helping each other and being uh, in this together. Uh, and that, that has really uh, struck me. And then the inventivity that we've seen. Um, apart from that, which I think is, is quite good to see because uh, uh, it, it, it has been quite revealing and uplifting for me. Um, I think the, the other things we're seeing is that in some countries, the situation is, is tougher. If you're living in India or in some of the other developing markets, it's not so easy to protect yourself. And, and uh, we see that in those countries, for instance, for our own employees, we, we need to help more, we need to explain better, and we need to uh, be very strict on the measures that we take. We do the same in, in, in the US, of course, and in Europe, but there we really have to insist so that people understand and protect themselves. And so what I'm expecting that will happen uh, from this is that developing markets will recuperate faster, uh, but uh, developing markets will take a little bit longer of a time. Uh, the, the, the virus has arrived later there. The impact will be bigger. The recession will be stronger. And so I, I am, uh, uh, I'm seeing a, a period for emerging markets that they really have to catch up while I hope and, and believe that in Europe and North America, we will uh, get out this at, at a very good pace. Mm -hmm. And then when you just think about some of the developing markets, I want to tie it back to more of the environmental initiatives that you all have. Um, cocoa suppliers, for example, a lot of them would be in the developing markets. How do you make sure that you support those farmers, the folks who are essentially supplying uh, the ingredients for your products? Um, well, we, we support them in normal um, uh, circumstances in many uh, different ways. We have this, this program called Coco Life, uh, and Coco Life is, is a program that helps them understand sustainable farming. Um, it also helps them understand how to provide more income for their family. Um, it teaches them the importance of sending, sending their kids to school, for instance. So we have a, a group of, uh, of people, uh, quite a few, that, uh, and some, some NGOs that we work with that constantly visit farmers in Ghana and Ivory Coast, co cocoa farmers, and work with them on all these aspects. Now that uh, this crisis or COVID has arrived, we need to also help them and understand this. So our teams on the ground are making sure that they uh, send uh, that they talk to them, give them the necessary information and help them understand how to protect themselves. As it relates to their income and their future, uh, the two countries are just implementing some something called the living uh, income differential, which is an extra charge that we will pay that all companies uh, that buy cocoa will pay 
to help uh, lift up the, the living circumstances of those farmers in Africa. And I think the time is right. They, they will uh, certainly be needing this and, and I'm very happy that we will be able to do so. Yeah, and it's certainly something, like you said earlier, I think folks, consumers will certainly remember some of the things that companies did during this time of crisis. I guess if you had any sort of parting thoughts, Dirk, what's been one of the biggest leadership lessons for you as the CEO of a global snacking giant navigating this crisis? The need to try to decide what you think is going to happen and then get your organization to react in line with that and you're not quite sure what is going to happen and so you you sort of try to figure out well, with your team what do we all think is going to happen here what does the future look like and as a consequence what do we have to do today and let's start working that um, that is tough that has been tough i think we've done well uh, i'm very proud of of our teams They've reacted incredibly. I think they feel very proud of what they've done and, and continue to do. But that was probably the biggest challenge. And it's, it's not over. That's the worst part, I would say. I don't know if there's going to be a second wave of COVID. I don't know what's going to happen if we come out of lockdown. Um, so we're uh, constantly, this morning I was in a meeting, uh, trying to, to discuss with our teams what else can we do to protect our people. I think that's, that's probably the biggest uh, challenge, the unknown. And having to take action today on something you don't know yet, that, that, is, uh, that has been tough for us. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Dirk Vandeput, CEO of Mondelez International, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.